Alrighty, so I am live and it is a wonderful day in the Lord. I'm happy to be here. I'm blessed to be here. I'm thankful that I have an opportunity to speak into y'all's lives this morning. And so as some people are hopping on, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Emily Rose Lewis and I am the founder of Emily Rose Lewis Ministries and Kingdom Living Ecclesia and Academy in Herndon, Virginia. And so I want to speak into your lives today and I want to encourage your faith. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning, Prince. Angela, you guys say hi to me this morning. Praise the Lord. Share this. Tag some people. Let's get some people on here this morning. I know I'm a few minutes behind, but I didn't want to hold my phone today, so I had to, to dig around for my, for my phone stand. How many of you guys were on last night? I have been getting some messages that the words that were spoken were spot on. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Sarah. Um, it was really cool last night at the School of Supernatural. If you missed it, um, I got on, because we always do prophetic um, practice. Sometimes we've gone out into the community and just you know, done treasure hunts to see where the Lord has led us, but we got on live and there's like four or five of us there and we did some prophetic um, words, personal words for people by name. Happy birthday, Charles. Woohoo! I love birthday months. I hope you're having a birthday week, a birthday month that you're celebrating your birth all week long. How many of you guys celebrate your birthday all week long? <laughs> or month? I try to. Um, okay, so the word that I have this morning from the Lord. Let me just pray while some people are hopping on. You guys, we need more people on here. Invite some people. Tag some people. I'm going to pray. This is going to be good. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that this word would be powerful, effective, that it would enact change in people's lives, that we would be blessed, that we would be... Um, given another level, another measure of wisdom. Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for access that we have to you. We thank you, God, for your spirit that lives on the inside of us. We thank you for the favor that we are walking in as your sons and daughters. We thank you, Lord, that we are blessed and not cursed. Lord, that you have made us the head and not the tail. We thank you, God, that everything we put our hands to prospers, that the, the moth doesn't eat and the thieves don't break in and steal because we put our treasures where our heart is which is in heaven we sow to the spirit and not to the flesh and we reap a harvest of righteousness in the mighty name of jesus we walk in the fear and admonition of the lord in the mighty name of jesus i'm going to be like i guess praying and speaking some things over us this morning because i'm going to be talking about our voices and finding our voices because we all have a voice and we're going to be speaking with one voice. We're going to be in one mind and one spirit as the ecclesia in the earth legislating for the kingdom of God here in the earth and seeing things change, seeing things transform. And the enemy might have tried to silence your voice, but we are coming into a season where we will not be silenced. We will not be muzzled. And the people of God are rising up in confidence. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray confidence over you. I pray a spirit of boldness, a spirit of courage, and that we are going to rise up in wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There was a couple of people who saw a vision of an eagle last night as we were prophesying over people. And, you know, eagle is the American symbol. And the eagles are amazing. They're amazing birds. And they fly above a storm. They do not fly in a pack. They are not created to be part of a one world order. <laughs> and so we just prophesy over America in the mighty name of Jesus that we will be set apart, that we will stand apart, that we will rise above, and that we will... Um, be a symbol of freedom and a symbol of hope throughout the world and a symbol of prosperity and what a nation that is founded 
um, under God. And so we just speak that and we declare over our nation in the mighty name of Jesus. But I'm, I'm praying specifically for people this morning that have been silenced. Maybe you grew up in a home where you're, you weren't allowed to talk. You weren't allowed to ask questions. You were just told, you know, listen, obey. You weren't shown um, honor as a human, <laughs> that you were treated less than. Maybe you grew up in a home where there was a lot of argument, a lot of dishonor. Well, the Lord is a God who loves to raise his children up in a culture of honor in families where there is honor among each other. And so the Lord's been dealing with me about this a lot lately, that it's so important that we honor one another in the Lord and that we esteem others even more highly than we esteem ourselves. And so I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that there would be a culture of honor in our churches, in our meetings, in our families, and that there would be a silencing of the enemy using our lips to tear other people down, to tear ourselves down, to speak out of our mouths negatively about the situation. Good morning, Darlene. You know, sometimes I even, I, I just, I woke up this morning and said, I am so tired. I am just so tired, you know. I need to get in bed earlier. We're working on it. I'm praying on it. I need to get in bed earlier. Got to get it, get it together. Go to bed earlier. But I end up working late into the night. But even if it's a reality, if you, you know, I, I was like, immediately, I was like, you know what? In the mighty name of Jesus, God is going to help me to get things organized out so where I can get in bed earlier. But I, for now, I'm up, and by the grace of God, I am going to get the things done I need to do, do and I'm not going to walk around sleepy and tired all day. I'm not going to do it. I have the energy, the power of God on the inside of me. In the mighty name of Jesus, do you know we are made in the image of God? And do you know that God governs by using his voice? He rules by using his voice. When he wants to make something happen, he doesn't use his hand. He uses his word. And that we are created in his image. And so God is getting us in alignment with his heart and his mind. And he is showing us what he wants us to see how he wants us to see things and he said I want you to line up your words and I'm gonna be talking about words probably for the next nine years because this is a decade of the mouth this is the decade of the mouth and this is something we cannot hear enough messages on what we do with our mouth because if any man is perfect in what he says he's perfect in all his ways that's what James said that the tongue is like a rudder on a boat and if you are using your tongue the right way the sh and you got the winds of the spirit in your sails you are going to get to where god has got where god is leading you lord it's a little crooked jesus we have got to understand the power of the of the spoken word it's why god has given us a mouth it's to release a sound and the enemy is after our sound. The enemy is after our voice. He wants to fill our mouth with complaint. He wants to fill our mouth with words of doubt and unbelief and bitterness and negativity. And he wants to use our tongue. I remember I had a friend who understood these principles really, really well. And she lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee when I was living there. This is the last time I'm gonna do this, okay. So, she was in the hospital. She had had some surgery, and she had a vision of the enemy, like one of those little devils sitting on her shoulder, saying, say it, say it, say it, say it, trying to get her to speak and come into agreement with some of the things that the doctor was saying. And they were just waiting, just like the angels hearken to the voice of God, when we are speaking the words of God, that sends forth angels. When we are speaking the words of God, that sends forth our angels at work for us. Not that we command the angels. The, God is the God of angel armies. But when we speak the word of God, angels are um, sent forth on our behalf. And when we speak what the enemy wants us to speak, it puts demons to work in our situation. 
the thing I greatly fear has come upon me. I know for myself, and I'm not saying I'm God, but, you know, we are God-like. We are like Christ. We are going to be like Christ. And so, you know, I have had times before, I have had a situation where I wanted to do something nice for somebody. I had a, I said, I'm going to do this blessing. I'm in the situation now where there's somebody um, in ministry that I have money for, for them. But there was some obstacles, and a lot of times God knows what obstacles need to be put in place to deal with our unbelief, to deal with our doubt, to deal with whatever it is we have. And these things kept happening where the money was being held up that were out of my hands. But this person kept messaging me every day. How you doing? What are you doing? No, no, no. What's going on? Da, 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 da. And then even I said, please don't message me. I'm working on this issue. We, I'm working on this issue. I said I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, the more she messaged me, the less I felt like working on it. Not that I'm not going to give it to her, but it's like, I mean, the way that I feel is stop, stop, just stop, calm down, stop stressing, stop pressuring. You got to get into faith. You got to believe God. You got to wait on his timing. If he has already said it, it's done. So now it would have probably been two or three days and she would have had that money released to her. But now... I just don't want to do it until she stops and listens to me because I flat out said, don't keep messaging me every minute. <laughs> I t said I'm working on it. I'll get it done. And and so I'm just kind of like, I might need to have another conversation. <laughs> but I know that I'm not just being belligerent and I'm not just being, you know, unsympathetic. I know that the way that I feel is probably very likely from what I see in the Bible about God, exactly how God operates and why some of us are being, our blessings are being held back. He said, I got it. I already said yes. Just walk like it's done. Just trust that I'm working. Like when you are in this place where you're not trusting and you're, and you're grasping and you're striving and you're not believing and you're fearful and all this, it's like, it's almost like tying the hands of God. He operates. He releases things by our faith. Things are released by our faith. And then a lot of times we put our mouth on something. I don't see how this person is ever going to change. I don't see how this marriage is, is going to make it. You know, maybe we'll just have to get a divorce. If you are a married person... Do not use the word divorce. Do not use the word divorce unless you are ready to sign on the dotted line because you are calling forth. You are calling forth the destruction of your marriage when you do that. I just do not do it. Do not do it. Do not do it. Do not give the enemy a place in your mouth like that. You know, God's given us our voice for conversation and he's given us our voice for legislation. So we need to watch what we're conversing about and then we need to legislate as kingdom people, as ambassadors, as royal priesthood. A, a royal priesthood means we have um, power, we have access to God, and we have a voice that can impact the world. We have a voice that can transform situations. You know, the centurion when he come to Jesus he wasn't even an Israelite and he said Lord he said that Jesus was going to go with him to heal his servant he said Lord I'm a man under authority when you know when my captain speaks we move we do he understood the authority that Jesus had to bring healing he had the uh, he understood authority more than a lot of the the disciples at that time Jesus was astounded he said just say the word just say the word and she'll be healed speak you've got authority speak the word and it'll happen and it's not a frantic like trying to chip away at something oh you know my marriage is gonna be sad my marriage is gonna get better my marriage is gonna get better oh god my marriage is gonna get better i'm gonna get that money it's gonna go oh god it's gonna go please it's not a begging that's a, it's not a begging it is a legislating when a judge signs an order when a judge speaks this is the sentence this is how it's gonna be and then you just stand in it because 
we'd like diffuse our own power by not walking by faith in situations. Does that make sense? I think some of the things about censorship that are going on, it is the enemy trying to silence the church. He, he is trying to silence the church. Why is he trying to keep us quiet? Why is he trying to shut us up? Why does the censors and all these social medias that's want to silence different views, that's want to silence different voices, that's want to silence certain ideas, conservative ideas, ideas that don't fit with the narrative, if voices didn't have power, why would they censor them? Why would they shut them down? It's because there is a power behind the spoken word. There is a power to shift things. There's a power to change world systems by the words that are put out there. That is why the enemy puts out words that are lies. I mean, the things that some people believe about President Trump, that if they had two cents to look at the actual reality of what's going on, they wouldn't believe it. Or, you know, many of the things that are going on. I mean, that is why they use words when they're push pushing an agenda. You know, this is a woman's choice. This is health care. They chose those words strategically. So people have associations with those words, health care. Well, women should have access to health care. What are these people not wanting women to have access to safe health care? It's not health care. <laughs> There's nothing healthy about ripping a baby from a mother's womb, limb from limb. That is not at all health care. So, here's the thing. You don't have to feel ready God is giving you a voice. God is speaking through you. God is speaking his words through you, ready or not. I feel like this is what the Lord is saying. Ready or not, here I come. I need my people to open their mouth and open their mouth wide and let me fill it. Somebody said they're trying to silence to eliminate hope. I saw a picture, uh, not a picture, of uh, a t-shirt that said, um, you know, expert isolator. And it had like a little smiley face with a mask on it and a heart on a little five-year-old shirt in the store. And I'm like, they are literally shifting a culture by the words, by the images, by the parables, by the experts. And we, as the body of Christ, have got to wise up and use the wisdom of God to combat all the lies and all the manipulation. There are people that are still afraid. It, it is beyond me that they're layering up masks now in some places. Like, I'll go to the grocery store. I'm like, we're still doing this? People are afraid. People are scared. There's so many deceptive mindsets that are being pushed on people and if we are not in the word and we are not hearing the word of God and we are not aligning with the word of God and we have not soaked in the word of God and we're not walking by the word of God we are going to catch hold of all these other voices all these other sounds all these other influencers that are not godly influencers that are mouthpieces for false prophets that are speaking doom and gloom and death and destruction and all this blah 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 as a body of Christ we somebody talked about hope we have got to hear the voice of God believe the voice of God and speak the word of God and 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 shatter down these strongholds to bring principalities down over nations there are power struggles there are power struggles going on in the heavenlies there are structures that have been set up, that have been built up. Now imagine this. Imagine if you had lived and you were um, Joshua who was told to march around the walls of Jericho seven times and this was your battle strategy. Would you do it? Would you do it? How many of you guys are living by your common sense? 
How many of you guys are walking by the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of man? How many of you guys know how to hear prophetic instruction? How many people are hearing from heaven, believing what God is speaking and going forth no matter what it looks like and pressing through and pressing through and living from that? that place where that inner voice is what's leading you and the prophetic strategies that God's giving you for your life and your marriage, whether they make sense or not, you are going along with it. Or how many of you guys are taking the path of least resistance? How many of you guys know that right now what many people are going through is the narrow gate? And at that narrow gate, few of our baggage is going to be coming through. And so if you feel squeezed, if you feel like you have been in a season of squeezing and a season of pruning, it's because you're going through the narrow gate. God's bringing you through that narrow space. And it's a narrow path, but it leads you into great spaciousness and, and great prosperity and mind and body and spirit. God's bringing us through the narrow gate. He's wanting to destroy institutions. He's wanting to raise up new schools. Our school systems have been corrupted. Our school systems have been corrupted. And it's being exposed through the stay home order. You see little splashes of news about teachers and what they're doing, they're selfishly just saying, you know, having these teacher unions not wanting to go back to school. They don't care about the students. They don't care. They don't really care about their. I mean, maybe some of the teachers are, are completely brainwashed and are afraid for their health. But how selfish is that? Everybody else needs to go to work, goes to work. They are not caring about the mental health of the students. There are kids that are killing themselves. There are kids that this year has been detrimental to their mental health as they've had no socialization. And we're seeing little things come out. We're, we're seeing people's true colors. And it's really time that as the body of Christ, we legislate with our voice and we establish schools and that we establish businesses and we, we raise believers up in our families. We're raising up a next generation. We need to be teaching our kids prophetically. Last night as we were putting our daughter to bed, me and my husband and my daughter were on our face praying together. We pray together. Every, all three of us speak in tongues around the house. My daughter sings in tongues all the time. She's three years old. We're raising up a powerhouse generation because there are some very corrupted people raising up children right now. We have got to have our children be raised up and understanding their power, their spiritual power and to speaking the words and to praying and to prophesying and to calling things forth and to legislate and then not be walking in fear. They're trying to get us to train our children to isolate and to stay away from others and don't touch and don't talk and cover your face and do this, do that. It's, it is just damaging long term. And I mean, I know there's some countries like, you know, my son lives in Hong Kong. He's like, this is just their culture and the Chinese culture. But who wants Chinese culture in America? Not me. <laughs> yeah, that might be their norm, but I don't want it to be my norm. I, I had my hands on her head, and my husband had his hands on her feet, and we were just praying in the t in tongues. And this is how she's going to sleep at night. This is how she goes to sleep for her nap. She gets prayed in the spirit over every day. If you have the gift of tongues, be using it. Pray in the spirit. Speak in the spirit. Legislate with your mouth. One of the things that I was... Um, teaching last night that I have read and that this is a really good way if you are not used to prophesying to build your prophetic confidence to go about prophesying over people even if you just see them in the park and they're over there you don't have to speak it to them you just begin to prophesy what you hear God saying about this what you hear God saying about that listen some of you have been listening to the voice of the enemy so long you don't even know the voice of God you just know the voice is telling you things are not going to work out many people are in the body of Christ are afraid to step out because they're afraid of falling they're afraid of failure and they have never stepped out into their calling. God is calling you to greatness. God is calling you to powerful things. He's calling you to shift world, shift the nation, shift 
your community, shift your family. He is calling you to be a powerhouse person in this earth that's attached to him and speaking his word and legislating and just walking around pulsating with his glory and his power and just in the earth being that, that person who heaven is touching earth wherever you go. We've been listening to the lies of the enemy for far too long and to our own, uns own unsanctified flesh. But we're going through. We're going through. We're being squeezed in our nation. We're being squeezed. In, in, and some people are being squeezed in their finances. Some people are being squeezed in their marriages. Some people are being squeezed at their job. But God is wanting his purposes to be established and he is wanting the church to be the voice that brings freedom to the captives. That's what Jesus said when he stepped out in his ministry. He read from Isaiah and he said that he was there to bring freedom to the captives. And we are in a jubilee period, believe it or not, where we actually can move freely still, even though there's restrictions and things like that. God is is making a way where there seems to be no way for his people to hear from heaven how to navigate the world systems to still be victorious and come out on top and reap a great harvest and prosper in their way. And he's doing it. Nothing is impossible with God. If you, like, if you study that verse out, no word spoken by God is without power. No word spoken by God is impossible. The rhema word of God. Are you speaking what you hear God say over your life? Are you writing down this particular um, book right here is where I'm writing the word of God over my life. What I am believing God for. And I go through old tablets and I see where I have spoken things and they haven't always come to pass at the time that I had wanted them to but that they have been fulfilled above and beyond. Write down what the Lord is speaking to you about your marriage, about your children, about your life, about your community, about your business. We got to get, you know, we got to get operate in, in, in wisdom. We're not going to we're not going to see this kind of legislated power in the church come to half-hearted people. Let me bef One more thing before I get off here. I want to talk about desire and I want to talk about passion. Do you desire the, the, the gifts of the Spirit to be operating in you? Do you desire to walk in wisdom? Do you desire, do you desire, do you desire to know God? Do you desire, do you hunger? And thirst after righteousness. What do you want? A lot of people say they want something. This has just been on my heart so much this week. A lot of people say they want to get out of debt. And when they're presented with opportunities to work and generate income, they say, oh, that's too hard. That's a lot of work. A lot of people want a godly marriage. But they don't want to pray. They don't want to get up early and pray. They don't want to serve. They don't want to overlook offenses. There are spiritual principles that God has set in place. And no amount of wishing is going to change them. And we reap what we sow. If we want to get out of debt. If we want to do anything for the kingdom. We have got to work at it with all our heart heartily as unto the Lord. We have got to. To put our hand to the plow. There is work to be done. It's not works of the flesh. It's not working in our own strength. It's, it's working within the will of God. And doing our part. And letting God do his part. It is not wisdom. If you are wanting to get out of debt. To spend more money than you make. <laughs> it is not wisdom. If you are wanting your marriage to be healed. To gossip about your marriage. And complain about your husband or your wife. Love covers a multitude of sin. Cover them. Cover them. Because you're believing they're going to change. And you don't want other people to know those things that they said or the way that they handled that situation. Because it's going to change that person's opinion of them. And you love them. They're one flesh with you. So you want them to rise up. You want people 
to see what you see, even if you're not fully seeing it yet. <laughs> and we ought to do that in, in, in all the situations of our lives. And I am telling you, God will transform our marriages, transform our finances, transform our businesses. We got to get out of that poverty mindset in every area. People have a poverty mindset in the church about finances. There is a limiting mindset about what God can do. And we think, oh, you know, we, we have, it, it's really greed. It's really greed and selfishness that has a poverty mindset because we get greedy because we don't think that God is an abundant God, that God is able to do above and beyond anything we could ever hope, ask, or imagine. We think there is a limited heaven. There's a limited resource. I mean, our government makes money like, like nothing, no, nobody's business. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't always work out great. There's inflation and stuff, but the kingdom of God, heaven isn't running out of resources. Just because somebody else has an amazing godly marriage and a nice um, family life and a prayer life doesn't mean you don't have to you don't have to covet what somebody else has. God's got a good marriage for you. If that's what He's got for you, that's what He's got for you. Somebody else having it and going to keep you from having it. And this is something you got to get a hold of. Get out of jealousy. Get out of greed. Get out of lack. Quit thinking like that. Quit thinking if somebody else is prospering in their way, it's taking money out of your bank account. Because that's ridiculous. If they can do it, read their books. Find out how they did it. Get to work. Do whatever God's called you to do with all your heart. Because God is going to bless the work of your hands. I speak that every day. God is blessing the work of my hands. He is giving me creative ideas. He is giving me financial strategy, marital strategy, strategy how to come up into that next position with my job, strategy how to discipline this particular child or that particular child. And it's not the same for every child. It's not the same for every person. How I'm making money might not be how you make money, but God has an individualized plan that is perfect for you. And it's going to be where you're most joyous. It's going to be where you're most peaceful. It's going to be where you're most prosperous. And we got to come together as one body in our marriages. We want our spouses to do well because we are one body. The same, I mean, how are you going to trust somebody as a friend or as a partner at work and they're cutting their husband or their wives down left and right? You think, that's your own flesh. You can't even talk good about your spouse. What you doing in the body of Christ? People, you know? I'm not saying you never confront issues in the body of Christ. You never confront issues in your marriage. You do. But I'm talking with an attitude of honor and humility. I don't always do it perfectly. But this is what we should be aiming for. Because our words have power. God's word in his mouth. We have the same power for God's word in our mouth. Didn't Christ say the very things that I do, you will do? And it's better off for you if I go to the Father because I'm going to send a spirit who's going to guide you into all truth. Didn't he say it's better off? that he? It is better off, he said, at this time here on the earth, that Jesus isn't sitting right next to us. The disciples who did miracles, who worked miracles, who spread Christianity throughout the world. Jesus was the one disciple on them face to face. And he said, it's better for us. About John the Baptist, who was the greatest prophet that ever walked the face of the earth. Jesus said that those in the kingdom, the least in the kingdom was greater than him. Because John the Baptist didn't have the fullness of the spirit every moment of every day in his life. Because before Jesus ascended, the Spirit would come upon people. The Spirit would come upon people for prophecy. The Spirit would come upon person and, you know, deposit some wisdom. But we have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of us all the time that we have access to. And we are thinking it's out there in the sweet by and by, you know, Lord God, I pray that we would get a hold of this. 
and that we would believe. The thing is, a lot of people don't believe, and that's why they're not working towards the things. If you don't believe your marriage is going to work, you don't bother working on it. If you don't believe you can ever get out of debt, you don't bother asking God for strategy. You, you know, it is... Lord Jesus, we need you. I pray, Lord, that you would break off mindsets. I pray for justice. I pray for wisdom. I pray that you would give us your instruction. And that we would partner with God, that we would partner with his word, that we would partner with his people, that we would partner with the things that he is wanting to do in our lives. We have to partner with him. He isn't just going to do it all for us. We have to partner with him. We have to partner with his word. We have to understand wisdom. I pray for wisdom for the people of God. I, I pray that people would get out of their head and live by the spirit and walk by the spirit. And to be able to see what God has for you. And I don't care how crazy people think you are for seeing the grand and great and mighty things that God wants to do in this nation. And speaking the heart of God and the words of God even before you see it or see how that's going to happen in your life. The more you press in to partner with God through believing his word and speaking his word and legislating how it's going to be in your life debt you have got to go you will crumble in the mighty name of Jesus I will not stay in debt I am paying off all of my debt in the mighty name of Jesus I am building my house with my hands women build your house with your words actually is what the proverb said a foolish woman tears her own house down with her own words we got to build up our men. We have got to build up our children. We got to build up our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a mighty, mighty um, authority that we have been given. And so I just speak over each and every one of you that this week you're going to come up higher and how you use your mouth, how you view things. You are going to be given new desire and new passion because the thing is, some of you just don't want it enough. There's some, sometimes, you know, I mean, like, you know, I've had struggles with my weight. Like, do I want to be healthy and at my goal weight more than I want chocolate cake? I mean, just to be honest, sometimes I have just been in periods of times where I would actually just prefer to eat cookies. <laughs> and then that, that, you don't get an outcome that way. You don't get an outcome that way. What do you want the most? Do you want to be healthy and do you want to be at your goal weight or do you want to eat junk? You can't have both. It kind of works that way in the kingdom. <laughs> Sometimes we struggle in something until we want to be free enough. Until we want something else enough that we don't want the thing that we are putting our time and effort into. It has, has Our desire is spiritual power. What you desire, what you long for, what you really want... That's what you're going to get because we are legislative kingdom people. If you really want to be healthy and thin, you can be healthy and thin. If you really want God to change your mindset, your mindset will be changed. If you really want to get out of debt, you can get out of debt. If you really want to purchase a house and quit renting, you can purchase a house and quit renting. I just believe that our desire when it is in alignment with the will of God for our lives, there is nothing that's impossible for us. There is nothing that is impossible for us. And I'm just praying that, that God would give you desires. I ask God for his desires. Lord, I've done this so much in my walk. I have had seasons where I really couldn't care two cents about my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I didn't like him, but I wasn't feeling passionately in love with him. I was busy doing other stuff. And I'm like, Lord, give me a passionate, passionate love for my husband. Stir that desire up in me. I was single for a, lo single for a really, really long time. Nothing against my husband, but, you know, our feelings are fickle. <laughs> you can pray, God, you know, you might just dread going into work 
every single day. Lord God, help me to enjoy my job. Help me to be here with purpose. Help me to have a desire to do what you're asking me to do. And if it's time for me to leave my job, help me to do it with excellence and desire to be here and have a good attitude while I'm looking for another job. Does this make sense? Is this making sense, y'all? Because I think it does. I think God is really bringing us to a place. <sighs> we want the kingdom. We desire the kingdom. Hunger and thirst after righteousness and your cup will be filled. I want to be in right standing with God. I want to walk by the precepts that he has laid out. I want the kingdom. I want that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit more than I want to know every little thing that's going on in the news and more than I want to watch TV and, you know, fill up on junk. There is a price to be paid no matter what. There is a price to be paid. There's a price to be paid. Do you want what God has for you? Do you want what you, when you see other people walking in what God has for them, do you get jealous or do you come to recognize if I want all that God has for me, I'm going to have to do all that God is requiring of me. And it might not make sense and it might cost and it might burn and it might hurt and it might stretch me and it might require me to give up this or give up that. Not legalistically, but those things just aren't going to fit through this narrow gate with me if I'm going to this higher realm with the Lord, if I'm going to these higher places. And sometimes you just have to do what now what you're going to be happy about later instead of doing now what makes you happy and then regretting it later. <laughs> we go back to the eating thing. Oh, that cake tastes so good for like two minutes. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> But thank the Lord I'm on a good path with that right now. So I'm eating healthy. I'm not eating sugar. I'm doing this uh, this diet system. I am taking a, I'm doing this lean body system that I sell. If y'all are trying to lose some weight, contact me. So I'm going to plug my business here. Um, God has brought me into this place where he is, he is, He's been giving me strategy for new income streams. And so I have a new business, an online business. It's social marketing, social retail, and I'm doing really good. I've only been in it like five weeks and I'm already doing good. And so I'm excited about it. And if you guys want to, if you, I, I sell this amazing collagen, it's, it's a, a liquid collagen and it puts elasticity in your skin. It helps with wrinkles, it helps with your joints, thickens your hair. You can see people's hair growing back. Men that have been losing hair, I have pictures of men that their hair is growing back. And it is like kind of the new beauty product, the new health product right now. I'm, there's lots of health products that I have. Find me and friend me on Facebook, Emily Rose Lewis, and send me a message if you want a coupon link to that. And then I also have a diet system. There's this amazing stuff that I take every morning. My only issue with it is it's so good it tastes like brownie batter and it does somehow doesn't have sugar in it but it helps shrink your fat cells and build muscle and um you know there's this whole system that helps with your appetite there's a a, a product called activate that is a three-day cleanse that kickstarts stuff i'll be i will be posting my before after pictures of my weight loss in a few weeks here because i just got started on that system but i've been using the skincare regimen for like five weeks and i've put pictures up it's amazing it's amazing. Or if you guys are looking for a new stream of income and you want to get on my team, I am, I didn't really, um, I was mostly just learning the business and doing the, the marketing side of it and, and the sales side of it. But there's another side of it where, you, where I can help other people bring in income and they can be on my team. If you want to be, if you want to hear about that, it is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you if you have, 200 friends on your Facebook list, probably not for you. You know, just message me about the products. But if you have a thousand friends, 800 friends or more on your Facebook list, um, this might be something you want to do. Or if you, you know, have a lot of female friends because you just share coupon codes and you make money.
and the products are amazing so you're gonna love them but anyway so there's that love you guys um, if you were in the Herna Virginia area this Saturday well Friday night we have a prophetic prayer and healing room and that is uh, starts at 7 p.m. and then on Saturday we're having another game night here I guess we're gonna be doing this most weekends <laughs> Because my husband loves games. They love games. And, and then Sunday we meet at 1030 at Kingdom Living Ecclesia in Herna, Virginia. And then, you guys, I have a couple of things coming up. On I'll, I'll post the date, save the date for May the 8th. I'm going to be in Charleston, South Carolina doing a workshop. I'm going to post tickets about that soon. Um, and we've also rented a house there. And so we're going to uh, put up, if you guys want to stay to um, rent a room with us in this house. I'm going to put a link up about that, some information about that. I don't know if you guys know Bevel and Betty, but she is coming into town here in Herndon, Virginia in April. I believe it's April 24th on a Saturday, and I'll put more details about that. So if you guys are wanting to come into town, that would be a good time to do it. She's going to be there on a Saturday. You come to the service Sunday. We're going to be talking. I mean, I kind of consider her a very modern day apostolic bold woman of God she goes to abortion clinics she's she like I think she kind of hit social media fame by like pouring black paint all over the black lives matter murals in in different cities she is tough she is bold and she might not be the taste of some religious folks but God is using her in a mighty way and I'm super excited to, that she's coming here with her um with her friend they have a podcast i'm sorry the other the other lady's name is i'm losing it but i'll put more information up about that love you guys if you want to partner with this ministry you can do it at emilyroselewis.org um i appreciate those who partner with the ministry we cover our partners with prayer and we are also working on opening an online church and and james prophesied last night confirming uh, that members of our online church that are mature believers that are tithing mature believers that are members of a church we are going to because to me the tithe is just baseline maturity if you're not tithing you're not a mature Christian in my estimation so that school of the supernatural is gonna we're gonna be opening it up to some of the members um, of our online church and then those who um, fill out applications that are a member, a tithing member of a church somewhere else. It doesn't have to be our church um, because it's a, 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 an advanced level class. So we've got about three more weeks in this semester and then we're going to have a break and then we're going to start up a new semester where we're going to be offering it online and we're going to check into some ways of like maybe piping people in through Zoom so they can see us so we can see them and uh, that's going to be an exciting expansion. I am believing the Lord that through this online church, we are going to help people start churches, home churches in their area. Because a home church, a cell church, a group of people meeting in the home is in this season in the world is, is huge. And God works through these discipleship groups, through these family groups, through people doing life together. And, um, I don't know. Somebody asked where the info is. A lot of these things I'm just telling you to look out for because I'm going to be posting links to. But if you're wanting info about the products that I sell or about um, starting a business, an online business and being on my team, you can find um, my Facebook page, which is Emily Rose Lewis, and send me a message. You can message me on Messenger on this thing, but my Messenger on my phone goes to my Facebook. If you if you can't figure that out, info at emilyroselewis.org and then I'll type out to you to help you try to figure out where to find me on Facebook. But info at emilyroselewis.org if you have any questions. Otherwise, use Messenger. Love you guys. God bless and we'll see you soon.